Um, hello everybody and welcome to this video recording which is based around theme 4's um, 4.1.7 from the specification. It's going to be looking at the balance of payments. Right anyway, now this is something that people often find quite confusing and difficult to get their heads around. So what we're going to understand the different components of the balance of payments. Now first of all, all the balance of payments does, it measures the money coming into our economy from across the world. And that will then deduct the money that leaves our economy to go to different parts across the world. So when we think about it, we have across an economy, different economic agents, consumers, firms and governments. What we know is our consumers, firms and governments will send money overseas for various different reasons. That would be an outflow of money. Um, foreign consumers, foreign firms and governments might send money into our economy for various different reasons. Well, that will therefore be an inflow of money. OK, so balance of payments will measure inflows of money into our economy from overseas and deduct the outflows of money, which is uh, money that will leave our economy to go overseas. OK, now what we will be thinking about, though, is this. When there is an inflow of money into our economy, it means that we as a country are earning foreign currency. So, for example, if um, somebody buys a British made car from overseas, then it means that there's an inflow of foreign money coming into our economy. When we spend money on foreign goods and services, though, there'll be an outflow of money. OK, so what we're doing, we're measuring the inflows and outflows of money from our economy. Now, it's worth stressing from the word go that the balance of payments must balance. In other words, it must equal zero. In other words, the money coming into the economy must equal the money leaving the economy. So the inflows of money should be equal to the outflows of money. So to give you an example, um, when we buy imports, there is an outflow of money. Well, the idea with there must be an inflow of money somewhere coming into the country to allow us to buy those foreign goods and services. That therefore means if one part of the balance of payment is in deficit, there must be something else which is in surplus. In other words, that surplus money will be used to pay for the deficit on another component of the balance of payments. Right now, we're going to be differentiating between two main different accounts. We have the current account and we have the capital and financial account, which we lump together. Now, the current account is thinking about incomes. So inflows and outflows of money linked for incomes. The capital and financial account is looking at investments. So inflows and in, inflows and outflows of money linked to investment purposes. What we're going to be thinking about first of all is the current account. Right now, the current account involves four main components. We have trading goods and we have trading services. We have investment incomes and we have something that we call current transfers. And in each of these different components of the current account, there will be inflows of money, so money coming into our economy, and there'll be outflows of money, so money leaving our economy. Now, the first component I've called the balance of trade. And this would lump together the trading goods and the trade in services together to find out our trade performance. OK, so what we would do, we would look at the inflows of money. So when we export goods and services across the world that will generate an inflow of money in to our current account. We then deduct the outflows of money, which is the imports of goods and services. So to give you a few examples here, if the UK was to export a car to Germany, there'll be an inflow of money in to our economy. Um, if we were to import um, foreign TVs, etc., there will be an outflow of money. So trading goods and trading services will measure our balance of trade performance. Now, if we've got a trade surplus, it means the value of our goods and services that we export across the world exceed the value of the imports of goods and services. Now, that would therefore mean that we've got an overall positive or inflow of money coming into our economy. A trade deficit would be where the value of exports of goods and services is less than the value of imports of goods and services. This would therefore mean that we've got an overall outflow of money from the economy. Uh, the next component of the current account is investment incomes. 
Now we're looking here at inflows and outflows of money linked to returns made on investments. OK, so to give you an example, first of all, think about how you might get inflows of money. If British people have made investments overseas, then that will generate incomes coming back into our economy. So to give you a few examples, if some of our businesses have expanded overseas or bought foreign businesses, then that would mean that profits from those businesses would flood back into our economy. Um, if we've made loans overseas, then we might be able to generate interest repayments on those loans that we've made overseas. It could even be dividends. If British people have bought shares in foreign businesses, there'll be an inflow of money through dividends. Um, it's also worth noting that we would include under investment incomes remittances. So British people might work overseas and some of those incomes will flood back into our economy. So within investment incomes, there will be inflows of money, which is returns made on investments overseas. But then there will also be outflows of money. So foreign economic agents will have made investments in the UK and that will then generate outflows of money. So if an American company, for example, has built businesses in the UK, they will extract profits back to those American owners of that business. Um, if in the UK economy we have foreigners that have invested into our businesses, they might generate dividends on the shares that they own. Uh, but also we have lots of migrant workers in the UK economy who meant that they may take money back to their home economy afterwards. So inflows of money from investment purposes take away outflows of money for investment purposes. It's also worth noting that investment incomes can be called primary incomes as well. So we're looking at returns made on investments. Uh, the final one is current transfers, which can also be called secondary incomes. And this is about flows of money um, linked to governments. So, for example, the UK um, still does to a certain extent, but when we were an official member of the European Union, we would make contributions towards the running of the European Union. That would be an outflow of money from our economy. Uh, we make regular contributions to the United Nations, uh, global charities, etc. That would be outflows of money. But a little bit will inflow back into our economy. So the EU would give us some money back um, to fund different projects in the UK. That would be an inflow of money. OK, now if you've got a current account deficit. What it means is if we add up the values as the inflows and outflows of money on balance of trade, investment incomes and current transfers, a deficit would mean there are more outflows of money than there are inflows of money. Obviously, a current account surplus would mean that between your balance of trade, investment incomes and current transfers, there are more inflows of money than there are outflows of money. OK, so current accounts, everyone is looking at inflows and outflows of money linked to incomes. Right now, the capital and financial accounts. Um, I'm not going to go into massive detail about this because we will look at this in a bit more detail in 4.4 of the specification. But what the capital and financial account is looking at investments. So investments coming into our economy as opposed to investments going out of our economy. So if you look at the blue words at the bottom of the page, first of all, please. Um, if foreign people invest into the UK economy, that will be a positive impact on our capital and financial account. There's an inflow of money coming in to our economy. If British economic agents invest overseas, that's a negative impact on our capital and financial accounts. Money is leaving our economy. So we're looking at inflows and outflows of money linked to investment purposes. Right now, first of all, um, the capital account of the capital and financial account. What we're looking at here um, is often the transfer of ownership of assets. So a good example could be uh, if foreign people were to move into the UK economy. Um, and then buy property in the UK economy, their investment is. They're buying British assets. We're also looking at the transfer of ownership of things like patents and copyrights. So, for example, um, if a UK firm was to invent a new piece of technology and a foreign firm was to buy that technology, that would be um, a transfer of ownership to a foreign person. That would be an inflow of money. Uh, the financial account, um, what we're looking at here is people invest in money, often linked to um, business activity. 
So we could be looking at foreign direct investment. This could be foreign people looking to build factories in the UK, expand into our markets by building new businesses and factories and shops, etc. It could also be portfolio investment, which is linked to buying shares um, in different countries across the world, in different businesses. It could even be linked to buying government bonds, so government debt. It's also worth noting that we have in here something called financial derivatives. Uh, and this is something we will look at in more detail in 4.4. But it's just worth remembering this can be either inflows or outflows of money. Uh, we also have reserve assets, which, which where the central banks across the world will buy uh, different amounts of foreign currency. OK, so to give you a basic idea here, everyone, think about how you might get inflows of money on the capital and financial account. So if foreign people were to buy our patents or our copyrights, or if foreign people were to buy property in the UK, if foreign people were to move into the UK and become a British citizen, that would be all inflows of money into our economy. It could even be foreign people buying our businesses right outright, investment into our businesses. It could be um, foreign people buying government bonds or corporate bonds. It could be foreign firms expanding and building new factories into our economy. All those things would lead to inflows of money on the capital and financial account. Now, the outflows of money would be British economic agents doing the same thing overseas. So if British people were to invest into factories over in America or to buy shares in German companies or to um, invest in government bonds in China, they would all be outflows of money. OK, so if all the investments coming into our economy, the inflows exceed the outflows of money, the investments that we make overseas, then you are running a capital and financial account sur um, surplus. If the outflows of money that our investments overseas are higher than the inflows of money, it was the investments coming into our economy, then you are running a capital and financial account deficit. Now, it's worth remembering everyone that if you've got a current account deficit, you've got to find that money from somewhere. And that money is found by having a capital and financial account surplus. So that surplus will be used to fund and plug the gap in the current account performance to make sure the balance of payments balances. So for example, if we've got a huge current account surplus with Europe, deficit with Europe, that will be funded by a capital and financial account surplus with Europe. So we'll be relying on the Europeans investing money into our economy so we can keep on running our current account deficit. Right now, you've got here a made up numerical example. Um, so look at the different components of the current account. We've got trading goods, trading services. You add these two together and you've got trade performance. We've got investment incomes and we've got current transfers. Now, what you can see here is inflows of money on the current account linked to exports of goods, exports of services, investment incomes and current transfers. So remember what these could be. These could be us exporting goods across the world like cars, etc. It could be us exporting services, which could be things such as um, financial services, music, film, that type of thing. Um, it could be inflows linked to investment income. So us receiving dividends or profits on investments we've made overseas. Or it could be foreign governments in um, lending us money or um, providing us money within our economy. What we would then do is deduct the outflows of money from imports of goods, imports of services, uh, money that will flow out on investment income. So that this could be dividends flooding out of our economy. And then current transfers out, which could be our government um, in effect funding projects in third world countries across the world, humanitarian aid, etc. Our contributions towards the, the running of the European Union. Now, it's worth noting here that the trading goods is an overall deficit of minus £100. The trading services is positive 50. So in this made up example here, the trade performance would be a trade deficit of £50. OK, so even though we've got a small trade surplus, the huge trade deficit in the, the deficit in goods more than compensates for that surplus in services. So trade balance is deficit. Investment incomes here is also deficit and the current transfers is also deficit. Now, if I put these four numbers together, I get an overall current account deficit of minus £150. 
Well, that £150 has got to come from somewhere. This economy would fill this gap by running a surplus on the capital and financial account. So what we're relying is, is foreign people who we've got this current account deficit with to keep on investing into our economy so we can cover this deficit on the current account. Right now, you've got here some data which shows the UK's performance on the current account. We'll look at the capital and financial account in a moment or two as well. Now, it's worth noting that the UK has spent the whole of the 21st century in a current account deficit. So you can see that it's on a downward trend as well. It's becoming a much bigger deficit over time. So what you can see is the most recent piece of data shows that the UK current account deficit is roughly at 3% of GDP. It actually spiked and went up to almost 7% of GDP um, right at the start of 2019. So the, the, the trend, if you like, is a, a growing current account deficit in our economy. Uh, you can see here the different components of our current account. I'm just going to be looking at the most recent piece of data at the end of that, um, that, that graph that you've got. Now, the blue line shows trade performance. And because it's below zero, this shows that the UK has got a trade deficit. So the value of our exports of goods and services is less than the value of the sorry, I beg your pardon, the value of our exports of goods and services is less than the value of the imports of goods and services that come into our economy. Uh, the yellow is primary incomes. So what we know is that investment incomes that leave our economy exceed the investment incomes that come into our economy. Uh, and then the final one, secondary incomes, is linked to current transfers, the government, etc. Um, we've got more outflows of money on that than there are inflows as well. So what we can see is every single component of the UK current account is in deficit. So a really, really depressing picture. Um, and you can kind of see here why um, UK trading goods performance is overall in deficit. And you can see here some of the different numbers for it. So we've got here finished manufactured goods. This is a huge deficit for the UK economy. This is, this is importing things like TVs and cars, um, electronic goods, household equipment, washing machines, etc. A huge deficit when it comes to those products there. Semi-manufactured goods as well is also in deficit. These will be things such as engine components, um, car parts, etc. Um, resources that might be used in producing clothes in our economy, importing cotton, etc. Fuels were a, um, a trade deficit in fuels, gas, oil, etc. And we've also got a trade deficit when it comes to food, beverages and tobacco. So the UK trading goods performance is a huge deficit. Um, there are some positives, though, in our trading services. The UK trading service is in surplus. And the biggest positive contributions to our current account here is financial products insurance and pensions, huge surpluses on the trade in services account. OK, so the UK performs well in trade in services, but we don't perform well in trading goods. So the trading goods deficit exceeds the surplus on trade in services, which means we've got an overall trade deficit in our economy. But right now, what we said before was, though, that when you operate a current account deficit, which the UK does, that money has got to come from somewhere. OK, now look at this data here. The blue line tracks our current account performance. Well, this data is a bit out of date, but it, the, the, the trend is still there. We can see here the UK has got a current account deficit. OK, and then we can see above zero that the capital and financial accounts are in surplus. So that green line is the capital account. The red line is the financial account. So the inflows of money on the capital and financial account will cover for the deficit on the current account. It's also worth noting that there is something we call net errors and emissions. Uh, and this is the idea that there are often inaccuracies on the capital account and financial account. And this is allowing for those inaccuracies to be corrected. The money's got to be somewhere in effect. So, guys, the UK covers its current account deficit by running a surplus on the capital and financial account. Uh, just to sort of show you some different comparisons here. 
Uh, you've got, again, date is a little bit out of date, but these things haven't changed that significantly, that countries such as Germany and Holland run current account surpluses, their positive values. So the inflows of money on their current accounts exceeds the outflows of money on their current accounts. You can then see that the UK um, has got, out of these countries, the biggest current account deficit as a percentage of GDP. OK, America also got a current account deficit and so was Spain. Right, I now want you to hit pause, please. Um, we've been through quite a lot of theory there. I want you to hit pause and think about the answers for these six different questions, please. Once you're happy with the answers, hit play and carry on watching the rest of the video, please. Right, now you've got here then um, the causes of surpluses and deficits on the current account. Now, what we know is the UK has got a current account deficit. So the inflows of money um, on our current account are less than the outflows of money on our current account. Now, these are some of the different possible reasons that deficit ones. It could be low productivity. If in your economy you've got poor productivity, it will mean that your goods are not competitively priced across the world. You may lack absolute and comparative advantages in production. And if that's the case, there'll be a low demand for your country's goods across the world. On top of that as well, if your goods are lacking competitors, your own citizens will buy foreign goods and services. So if you've got lower productivity than other countries across the world, then it will mean that your export demand will be falling and your import demand will probably be increasing, which would lead to a current account deficit. Um, another course could be deindustrialization. So as your big industries that, you know, used to be successful start to decline. So in the UK, this could be steel manufacturing, shipbuilding, et cetera. That means that things that you used to export, you no longer export. And then you probably import these things instead. And that would, again, weaken your current account performance. Um, another idea could be stronger currency. Remember, spice, strong pound, imports cheap, exports dear. Well, if imports are cheap and exports are dear, that would lead to growing import demand and falling export demand. In other words, you've got an improving terms of trade. So importing becomes cheaper, so you do more of it. It could be that your inflation rate is higher than that in other countries. So if you've got a relatively higher inflation rate, then it means that our inflation is going up quicker than what other countries are across the world. And if that happens, it means that our price levels are growing quicker than theirs and we're losing international competitiveness. And that will again lead to a growing trade deficit problem. Um, it could be driven by high economic growth. What we know is that people in Britain have got high marginal propensity to import. So as we earn more money, we start to buy more foreign goods and services. And again, that would worsen our current account performance. Um, it could be driven by low quality exports. If our goods are of low or poor quality, then again, across the world, there'll be a low demand for those goods and services. But also, it will mean that our own people want to buy imports rather than buying domestic goods and services. So the things on the right, everyone, would account for a trade deficit and a poor current account performance. Now, if I flip all those different things round, we get the causes of a current account surplus. So if your productivity is increasing faster than other countries across the world, it means that your exports become more competitively priced and that would raise export demand um, from your economy. It also means that your own citizens would rather buy domestic goods rather than foreign goods. Um, it could be driven by industrialization. So in China, for example, as they build up more industries, it means that they no longer need to import those products and they can export those products across the world. Uh, weaker currency, think about Whippedeck. If your currency loses value, then imports become dear, exports become cheap. And again, that should lead to growing export demand and falling import demand. If your inflation rate is lower than other countries across the world, it means that your prices are growing slower than those in other countries across the world. Well, that would mean that your exports become relatively more competitive and that should raise export demand. In effect, what we've got here is worsening in terms of trade. Um, importing becomes relatively more expensive, so you do less of it as well. But also, if what you sell is high quality and very, very innovative, there'll be a high demand for your goods across the world. OK, so what we know is countries like the UK, you've got a current account deficit. And we know countries such as Germany, China, Holland have got current account surpluses. 
Now, um, does a current account deficit actually matter? Well, possibly. First of all, the evidence is that an economy may lack international competitiveness. If you're importing vast amounts of products rather than exporting them, then it suggests that your country's industries are inefficient. And that could lead to things like deindustrialization and the growth of things like structural unemployment over time. Um, it could also mean that, well, it will certainly mean that if you've got a current account deficit, you've got to plug that gap by running huge capital and financial account surpluses. And that could mean that your economy is borrowing and having to attract lots of investment from overseas to cover that current account deficit. It can also lead to the currency getting weaker. Now, there will be a future video looking at exchange rate theory, but the basic rationale here is that um, if people aren't demanding your goods and services, there's a low demand for your currency and your currency will potentially get weaker over time. Now, it might not always be a problem, though. Um, it might not be a problem if it's only a short term deficit. Now, what we know is the UK current account deficit is long term. So we would disregard that for the UK economy. You could also argue as well it's not a problem. If you can track it, it drag in the investment on the capital and financial accounts, then that will cover that current account deficit. You could even argue it's not a problem if that deficit is because you're importing lots of capital goods. So if your trade deficit is driven by importing lots of machinery, infrastructure, then OK, it's a current account deficit. But what that will do, it will improve your productivity over time and hopefully mean that that trade deficit starts to correct itself anyway if you're becoming more productive by buying better machinery and equipment from across the world. Now, the next bit is a bit strange. Is a current account surplus a problem? Well, actually, it can be. Well, first of all, if you've got a trade surplus, the value of your exports will exceed the value of your imports. Well, that raises aggregate demand and can potentially create demand pull inflation. But it also means that a massive quantity of your country's output is leaving your economy, is going overseas. And that means those goods and services cannot be consumed domestically. And that means that domestic people can maybe not get hold of the output they need to meet their wants and needs if it's all going overseas. You've also got the risk of retaliation. So if you've got a huge current account surplus against one other economy and they're suffering from it, such as deindustrialization, they might retaliate against that by imposing protectionist policies. But also as well, it can cause your currency to get stronger. If there's a high demand for your country's goods and services, then it would raise the demand for your currency to buy those goods and services. And that can lead to your currency getting stronger over time. Right, OK, now just to sort of wrap up this um, video by showing you this global trade imbalances. Now, a global trade imbalance just basically means you've op you're operating with either a current account surplus or a current account deficit. So what we know is that countries that have got a current account surplus, this could be Germany, it could be China, etc. They will then invest that money overseas on the capital and financial account. So countries with current account surplus can use that money to build up a big stock of overseas assets by investing money overseas. So, for example, the Chinese government make huge investments across the world um, to raise their influence in different countries. Uh, countries like the UK that have got a current account deficit have got to cover that by running a capital and financial account surplus. Now, that's not necessarily a problem as long as you can keep attracting that investment on the capital and financial account. It is possible, though, that economies can run into what we call a financial crisis. So a good example here could be if, for example, you've got a current account deficit and you cannot attract the money on the capital and financial account, it will mean that your economy becomes insolvent. They haven't got the funds available to maintain their current account deficit. Now, that could mean that the central bank, so the Bank of England might have to intervene to prop up the economy. Or it could mean that we've got to go across the world and borrow money through organisations such as the International Monetary Fund. Right, everyone, now just to wrap up this video, you've got here question two. So again, what I would like to do, please, is to jot down your answers for these questions here. And then once you've done that, you have finished this video. Thank you very much.